This is the Philippines. As you can see, it is made up of a bunch of islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, over 7,000 to be specific. Being an archipelago of islands by the equator sure means it's tropical, but does that make it a paradise? I'm here to say that it's geography, nature, and planet Earth has doomed the Philippines into being one of the hardest places to develop. Well, maybe not doomed per se, as the Philippines is still growing rapidly economically and population-wise, but the geography sure does not help it. What could be wrong with its location and climate to make the Philippine Islands destined to a life of pain? And how badly has geography hurt it in the past? Will the Philippines ever be able to escape its physical struggles? Funnily enough, in a video about pure geography, I'm going to talk about the demographics and history of the Philippines first, as they are truly important to understand the story of the nation. The Philippines is a very interesting place, being a mix of Southeast Asian, Austronesian, and Spanish cultures, with a little bit of American mixed in too. The first people groups to inhabit the Philippines were the Austronesians, likely sailing over from what is now Taiwan. These early Filipinos were mostly tribal hunter-gatherers and warrior societies. But look at the Philippines, it's just a bunch of islands. These early humans did not develop as a single cohesive group simply because they weren't connected. There was Chinese influence, Hindu influence, and Islamic influence spreading to different islands at different times. This version of the Philippines was a jumble of cultures and identities, the Manila, Cebu, Lucos, and Sulu just to name a few. But something was brewing in Europe at the same time, and the Spanish decided to sail all the way around the world in search of gold and God. Ferdinand Magellan used this treaty to claim all of the islands in the Philippines for Spanish rule, and well, they got it. Existing tribes were now put into Spanish towns mainly to convert them to Christianity, and it worked. The Philippines nowadays is over 90% Christian, making it the only major Christian nation in Asia. And yes, there are plenty of revolts against Spanish rule, but there are no widespread revolts across the country, only small ones from individual groups at a time. But the people living under Spanish rule were still lacking an identity, other than all being Christian now. After Latin America declared independence, there was a spike of immigration to the Philippines. The Spanish term Filipino was shifted to mean everyone living in the islands, instead of just the Spanish immigrants. Thus, a new identity was born, and a shared identity could mean a shared revolution. The Philippine Revolution took place two years before Spain and the USA had a war, and the revolution succeeded in making the first Philippine Republic, until the Americans invaded a year later. Under this rule, Tagalog became the official language of the islands, furthering a shared identity. Then during World War II, the Japanese invaded, fought a war, then left. And now the Philippines was truly, for the first time, united and free. The post-colonial period was full of dictators, coups, and insurgencies. But nowadays, it is more or less stable. For now, because as I mentioned, the geography of this land is cursed, and it's only a matter of time before it steps in. Throughout the history of the nation, I talked a lot about this shared Philippine identity. That's because the Philippines has both simultaneously a very strong identity and a very weak one. Obviously, in the modern day under the Philippine Republic, today's residents have a shared national background. They also have a semi-shared geography and are the only real Christians in their region. So in theory, the Filipino people are fairly united, but looking at their demographics shows another story. From the mishmash of various tribes and cultures, the Philippines now has over 180 ethno-linguistic groups. An ethnic map of the Philippines can show you the nature of the problem. Every group is classified as being indigenous or non-indigenous and Moro or non-Moro, with the Moro peoples being the Muslim majority groups. The Moros comprise 5% of the population, mainly in the south. The indigenous peoples are found in the interior of the islands, but are spread pretty evenly throughout the country. And the non-indigenous, non-Moro peoples, also called the Christianized groups, are found by the coasts all throughout the nations, making up 87% of the population. It is overwhelming how many ethnic groups are found in the islands, but some examples are, for the Moros, the Sulu and Palawan people, indigenous, the Lumad and Igorot, and Christianized, the Cebuano, Tagalog, and Ilocano people. Of course, this many ethnic groups means a ton of languages, and the Philippines has around 150. There wasn't even an official language until 1987 when Tagalog, later becoming Filipino, was designated so. 
and even though over half the population speaks either Tagalog or Cebuano, only Tagalog and English are actually taught in schools nationwide. Filipino is the language of the people, and English is the language of business in the nation, but neither are spoken by a majority of people, and that's exactly the problem. There is no one language that everyone speaks, not even close. So regional identities are extremely noticeable in the nation and are sometimes preferred to the national identity. Being physically connected would boost their national identity, of course, but there is a huge sea in between the different ethnic groups, so the Philippines is bound to be culturally separated forever. And literally too, the Philippines is going to be separated forever. The Philippines is, after all, a chain of islands, but so are plenty of other nations. Why is the Philippines specifically doomed? It's fairly simple. It is this very geography that has kept the Filipinos separated, not just through the islands, but through its terrain and climate too. The Philippines is made up of around 7,600 islands, yet only 11 make up 95% of the land mass, with two, Luzon and Mindanao, making up a third. Like its cultures, it's very hard to talk about a single feature that all these islands share. Most of them are mountainous, mainly along the eastern side running with the Philippine Trench. But many singular spicy mountains stand alone on different islands. These mountains further separated the Philippine tribes, creating pockets of distinct cultures. Humans generally don't like to make civilizations in valleys, plateaus, and mountains. Unless, of course, they are right by rivers, of which the Philippines has a distinct lack of. The longest river in the nation is only 500 kilometers long on its largest island, Luzon, which compared to most other major rivers is child's play. Therefore, in order for the native people groups and later the colonizers to interact with each other, they would need to either travel along the coasts or somehow make the journey through the highlands of the center, and the journey was not easy. Because the Philippines sits near the equator, it is mostly made up of overgrown tropical rainforest and swampy mangroves along the coast, although in the northern highlands there is a small section of temperate land. So the easiest thing was to develop on the coasts, meaning a lack of infrastructure in the interior where most of the farming and mining of the nation can actually be done. It also means a lack of a highway or railway system to connect the nation together, but I guess that could have been obvious. So the physical geography from the hot, humid jungles, valleys, and plenty of islands did not help unify the nation, but divide it apart. And still, that's not even the biggest geographic challenge the Philippines faces. Let me give you a small lesson in earth science. When two tectonic plates rub past each other, the relatively small force compared to the plate creates a relatively massive force when you live on that same plate. And there's no more notorious tectonic activity than in the ring of fire. This is a ring of tectonic plates around the Pacific Ocean, which has created ring-shaped patterns of earthquakes, mountains, and volcanoes. The Philippines sits right in the middle of the ring of fire, getting absolutely shafted by tectonic activity. Earthquakes in the Philippines are a regular occurrence. On average, the nation receives a magnitude 7 earthquake yearly. Not only do deaths happen, but it also costs billions and billions of dollars to repair the costs done by the earthquake. The strongest so far occurred in 1976 near the Moro Gulf. Sure, there are plenty of other regions who deal with earthquakes, but there's simply more coming at the Philippines than those other nations. Second, because of its tropical location with an ocean to the west, the Philippines has a regular typhoon season, destroying many, many coastal settlements and development. The worst one being Typhoon Haiyan in 2013 costing 2 billion US dollars in damage, and the 10 other costliest typhoons all happened within the last 10 years. It is not a cheap or healthy occurrence for a nation to have to rebuild itself every year. The seismic activity and low-lying land also causes mudslides and flooding, destroying even more land. Forest fires rage on yearly in the dense rainforests prone to lightning from the heavy rain, but hey. At least these mountains won't cause any issues. Volcanoes though are one of the Philippines' biggest threats. There have been two literal extinction events from the Philippine volcanoes before humans walked on this earth. The deadliest and most infamous being the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991. 20,000 people needed to be evacuated just from the Lahar flow alone a mix of hot ash and mud flooding the land. 
there was massive destruction in the surrounding area and ash coverage which reached Thailand, and there have been hundreds of other eruptions like it throughout history. The early people groups of the Philippines were not nearly as prepared as the modern Philippines is now, so whenever a major natural disaster happened, it could have literally ended their culture. And when you live in this region, a major natural disaster is going to happen pretty often. As the Earth's climate changes at a rapid pace from human activity, some of these major natural disasters will only happen more often. The typhoons, forest fires, droughts, and flooding will only speed up. Luckily, earthquakes and volcanoes are fairly unaffected by climate change, which have generally been the worst disasters in Philippine history. Their main two issues from climate change seem to be too much water and too little water. Water is probably the most important resource on this planet, specifically fresh water. All the food we eat needs water to be produced. Currently, the Philippines has a dry season and a wet season. In the future, there will only be a drier dry and wetter wet season. During the dry season, where one third of the Filipino population works in agriculture, water will be scarce, with droughts predicted to ravage the nation. But during the wet season, it's expected that extreme rainfall in the north and center will essentially flash flood many settlements. There will be extreme days with less than 2.5 millimeters of rain, and some with over 300 millimeters of rain. Temperatures will also rise around 3 degrees, making some days reach 35 degrees in the Philippines, where the average temperature is already around 26 degrees and stays relatively the same annually. The water won't just fall on them, it'll rise up too. Sea levels are predicted to rise around half a meter in the Philippines. The Philippines is already extremely volatile to any change in sea level due to being an extremely coastal nation because they couldn't live in the centers of the islands. The Philippines will have a future where water is both in short supply and their worst enemy. The Philippines is such a unique area of the world, it doesn't really fit in anywhere. It's not entirely Asian, not entirely Western, and not entirely Austronesian. It is a blend of all these cultures plus significant Hindu and Islamic influences to make a society like no other. Unfortunately, Mother Nature already had that same plan. Making the Philippines an archipelago of separated islands covered in mountainous rainforests to stop the early humans from interacting with each other, and with disaster after disaster costing billions and countless lives every year, the modern Philippines still struggles with fighting nature. They will only have to keep fighting more as climate change keeps sending more and more disasters their way. Yet, the Philippines have prevailed through foreign rule and all of these disasters before, so maybe the nation isn't doomed, just at least cursed by geography.